Hey guys, it's May. Today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my favorites from the month of April. Skincare products, lifestyle things that I just rather enjoyed over the month of April. Um, if you wanna check out my other favorites videos, I do have a playlist of monthly favorites so you can binge on what I have liked in other months. Um, but starting off, I have a sunscreen recommendation for those of you uh, in Europe, at least, you can get your hands on it. A viewer said this to me. Um, it is a German uh, Garnier uh, sunscreen, Garnier Ombre Solaire Sensitive Expert, SPF 50. This is like a dream come true. It is a chemical sunscreen. There's no cast, really light, weight in the sense that it doesn't feel greasy or heavy on the skin. I can drop this straight around my eyelid area and not have any burning or stinging or irritation. It stays put, doesn't weep into my eyes. Um, and again, I don't get any, I also don't get any burning or stinging when I put it on my skin. Um, and it's got uh, bimetrizinol or tinosorb S, which will provide good protection against UVB and UVA. It also has Uvenol T150, that's gonna block UVB. It has avabenzone, which is gonna block UVA very broadly. Octisalate, and because Garnier is a L'Oreal brand, you're gonna get the Mexeril XL and Mexeril SX. Those filters are L'Oreal exclusives. They offer really fantastic uh, broad spectrum protection. So you get a good battery of filters to cover, you know, wear different ones. You know, when it comes to sunscreens, they, they kind of peak in an, in an area and they still absorb, but it's nice to have something that peaks somewhere else. So you kind of can balance out and get a really good broad spectrum product. The other nice thing about the filters in this is that they are really durable under UV exposure. Uh, even Ava Benzone, it is, it is one that we have here in the States in our chemical sunscreens and it's not very stable, but in the presence of some of these other filters that I mentioned, it is a lot more stable. Uh, so you get good durable UV protection that is broad spectrum. Uh, and I really like it in the sense that it doesn't look greasy or shiny on the skin. I'm not wearing it currently. Um, but uh, I, I do recommend it. It's um, kind of similar actually to the La Roche-Posay Shaka Fluid. Um, I didn't take the time to remind myself the ingredients on that one, but if you blindfolded me and put Shaka Fluid on one side of my face and this on the other, I honestly could not tell the difference. Um, yeah, and it doesn't, once, once you put it on, it dries very quickly and then you can put like makeup and stuff, makeup on over it if you want to. There's no like pilling or rolling. It really stays in place very well. I don't believe this is water resistant, however. Um, but whoever it was that sent this to me, thank you so much. I have really been enjoying it. Highly recommend it, especially if you have oily, especially if you have oily skin, you're gonna find that this is a good one. It doesn't look greasy at all. But if you do, if you have a deeper skin tone, try it and you live somewhere where you can get this, definitely try it because it's not gonna leave, it's not gonna leave a cast. And it should be pretty friendly in the beard area as well. Uh, it is, you know, pretty quick absorbing. It shouldn't leave a residue on the beard hairs, but I, you know, I don't have a beard, so take that with a grain of salt. Speaking of sunscreen, I have really been happy with these MD Solar Science tinted lip balms. These are fantastic. They don't have any fragrance and they're actually pretty moisturizing. They are chemical sunscreens, which I was a little bit apprehensive about because chemical sunscreens frequently irritate my lips, but so far are so good. That has not been the case. I've really been enjoying the red shade in particular. Um, I'm wearing it currently, but here, this is what it looks like up close. I'm wearing it currently, but what I'm also wearing, and I like how it did, um, after I put this on and let it, you know, kind of dry down, I mean, it dries down pretty quickly. I came on over with my other favorite lip SPF, the Vanny Cream Lip SPF. This is a mineral sunscreen. So it leaves a little bit of a white cast and it kind of gives the skin, the, the skin of the lips almost a peachy, like a, a glow, a pinky glow. But over the red, I don't know, it kind of made them more of a pink, which I like. I like the way that looks, just kind of change it up. I will try and find a photograph of me wearing the red without the white over it so you can see the contrast. But they also have a nude shade. 
if you like nude, a nude lip. Um, and they have a pink. This is a deeper pink though than what you get from putting the red with the vanny cream, with the vanny cream. So I wanna experiment with the pink and the nude, see what, what that yields. But yeah, I've been really happy with this Mambo combo of the MD Solar Science and the vanny cream on over or you know not depending on what kind of shade i'm going for so this is a good alternative to lipstick skin cancers on the lips very common not to mention you know the there are signs of photo damage to the lips wrinkling discoloration um, so wearing spf on the lips is really important but you know your facial sunscreen if you put it on your lips sometimes it's just too drying and irritating i find that i like to have a dedicated lip spf for that reason. Um, one other thing I'll point out, uh, which is really important to me, <laughs> is the color does not rub off on my, on my numerous beverages that I'm always slicking back all day. Obviously I do reapply it because I'm, you know, to a certain extent you are removing some of the sunscreen, but like the actual color isn't like smearing all over the place, which I really like. So yeah, definitely check them out. They are a little, I guess, expensive. Uh, in my opinion, $20, but I definitely think it's worth it because they do hold on, you know, they do stay on really well and offer good SPF and are not drying. All right, the next skincare product that I've really been loving this past month is from Paula's Choice. It's the Omega Complex Cleansing Balm. Uh, they did a really good job with this. What I like about it is that it glides over the skin really well and then you gently massage it. You can definitely appreciate that it very quickly starts to slip in between the cracks and crevices of your skin, which is not a sheet, remember, it's you know got texture to it and you know, it starts to lift up any dirt, makeup, impurities, break it up. And then we add water, it really emulsifies very nicely into a creamy lather and it rinses off. It doesn't leave any kind of greasy residue on the skin. Um, it really does a good job taking off, taking off the day. Um, speaking of taking off the day, I do get a lot of requests to review and I have the Clinique Take the Day Off Cleansing Balm. That is a firmer balm in my experience. It works well. Um, this is an alternative. I mean, when it comes to cleansing balms, it's kind of like you start splitting hairs, but I would say I have really been impressed with this simply because of the fact that it, the way it leaves the skin feeling clean, soft, moisturized, but not greasy, and you, it really does a good job removing stuff. It's very similar um, in performance to the Inky List Cleansing Balm, but it's a little bit softer, so it glides over the skin more easily, and it does not have that odor that a lot of people do not care for from the Inky List one. The Inky List one smells oaty. This obviously does not. It's got jojoba seed oil, which is really stable and tends to not be problematic. And it's got emulsifiers. Yeah, highly recommend this. Uh, if you're in the market for a cleansing balm, it is a good one. I've been really happy with it. I prefer it actually to, um, you know, several months ago I was using the Colleen Rothschild cleansing balm. And that was nice. It's kind of more luxurious. It has fragrance in it. That is definitely a firmer balm. And I actually prefer this better just because I find it's a lot easier to glide over the skin. All right, I've been trying out a new UPF brand from Amazon uh, for clothing, and I've really been happy with this brand, Bayleaf. I got a jacket for like working out, running errands, and I love it. It was pretty inexpensive. It's held up in the washing machine very well, multiple washings, and it doesn't uh, make you feel sweaty, which is really important here. <laughs> If you're gonna be wearing long sleeves in the summer, it's gotta be very, very, very lightweight. Uh, this is a really comfortable jacket. It's got pockets. It has a hood too that um, actually goes over your head well. Have you ever noticed sometimes they scrimp on the hood? They're like, oh yeah, there's a hood. But like when you put it on, it's like, like you can't really, like it's stretched this is loose enough but it actually stays up so i like that it's great for protecting your scalp 
um, midline scalp when you're outside. Really comfortable to be outdoors and, and I highly recommend it. Another UPF thing though that I've been loving this month, San Diego Hat Company. I originally heard about this from Marnie and the Skull Girl. Uh, she started talking about this a few years ago and I've always had it in the back of my head to get one of these. They are a sun hat but they are more like a visor and they go all the way around and Velcro in the back. And the reason I like this personally is because I have long hair and I like to wear my hair, as you guys know, on the top of my head in a bun. And most hats don't cover that, but I wanna wear a hat to protect my face and you know skin and whatnot. Especially if you do your hair up um, and you have to go somewhere, you don't want to wear a hat, it's going to mess up your hair. This is nice, nice. You get that hat protection, um, but you don't mess up your hair. Um, but if you have thinning hair, you do still need to be mindful of the sun exposure to your exposed scalp. For me, I've got long hair, put it up in a bond, it's very thick. I'm getting very good, you know, coverage. So yeah, I've been pretty happy. I'm hoping to experiment with more uh, UPF brands. I always recommend Cooley Bar. They're fantastic, but they are, you know, pricier. So this, <clears throat> excuse me, Bay Leaf brand is a lot more, you know, affordable and you can get it on Amazon. So I really like the jacket and then these hats are pretty inexpensive as well. Uh, great option for the upcoming summer months. All right, this month I read a good book that I rather enjoyed and happy to recommend to you guys. It's called The Woman in the Window. And it's a, sort of a suspense. It's about a woman with agoraphobia. She's in her house all day. And then this family moves in next door. I won't give it all away, but she witnesses something. Um, and what I liked about this book is, you know, she obviously is struggling with a psychiatric illness, agoraphobia, but they really show her as a, you know, more than just that. And I think, you know, society has this way of like, trying to label people who have mental illness as just their mental illness. And it's very strange because it's not like, you know, other diseases. People are walking around with high blood pressure, high cholesterol. People walk around with, you know, diabetes, things going on internally. And we're not like, you know, labeling them that. But if you have a, people who have psychiatric illnesses, they somehow get, you know, stigmatized, sometimes treated like there's some sort of social pariah. This book showed this woman as an actual person, not just her disease, which I rather appreciated. I mean, she like has hobbies that she enjoys, things that she likes. Um, you know, I, yes, she struggles with this issue, but um, she's more than that. So I appreciate that. I find that, you know, sometimes Hollywood makes it seem like somebody with a psychiatric illness is just that and you know kind of a social pariah like i said um so i appreciated that about this book and i can't come to find out netflix is making has made a movie of this that is apparently going to be available this month so i will be checking out the netflix version of this hopefully they make it as enjoyable i watched a handful of movies this month and two that i am happy to recommend to you guys that i rather enjoyed one is a classic that i've had on my list for a long time to watch cool hand luke with paul newman that was so good i especially love the final scene uh i don't know i just the way that movie was done there's certain things that you just I don't know, the directors and producers, they don't add certain elements to movies anymore that they used to. And you know, certain stylistic things you don't see anymore. Now that we have all these effects and 3D this and flashy that and computer generated blah, blah, blah. Sometimes just the basic artistic elements I find are lacking. This movie was quite good in the sense that you see that. There's a lot of symbolism. It was good. Paul Newman is a fantastic actor. Number two, uh, movie Minari. I actually rented this. Renting, which as a side note, now that we can't really go to movie theaters anymore, renting a movie has become this like cost prohibitive ende endeavor for certain, like, it, it's like $20 to rent a movie. Do you guys remember when you could go to Blockbuster? Oh, here I go with my old timer story. When you could go to Blockbuster and like rent a movie for like two or three bucks. Or like when Netflix used to be a DVD like delivery service, 
you could actually get something that you were like renting and you had for several weeks. Now, like what, are you kidding me, Amazon or uh, Netflix with these rental prices, very expensive. Anyway, it's Minari. <laughs> All my grumblings aside, Minari is very good. It's about a Korean family and the father kind of has this dream of like having a farm. Uh, it was a really good movie, really well done. And the it just kind of shows the struggles of making it. Uh, and especially as an, you know, for entrepreneurs, people who are, you know, very you know, motivated to advance their life uh i thought it was an accurate portrayal of the struggles that you go through it was very good um and well done so i enjoyed that movie a lot that's the media stuff that i consumed and then food wise you guys who watch my vlogs have seen this uh i've really been loving it it is this popcorn maker that i got on amazon by popco and you just put the popcorn in it and here so you put roughly two tablespoons of popcorn. It's got a fill, two fill lines in it actually. Two tablespoons of popcorn kernels is what I do. Uh, and that ends up being about right for me. Uh, and then you drop the lid in, you put it in the microwave for like three minutes and 40 seconds. I find it's a sweet spot, at least with my microwave, but it's gonna vary depending on your microwave. Pops the popcorn perfectly. It doesn't burn the kernels or anything like that. Um, I have been loving this. I buy the popcorn kernels from iHerb and I've really been enjoying these Eden popcorn, this Eden organic popping kernels. I find these are really good when they pop. You get a nice voluminous kernel and they don't burn. Uh, and yeah, like I said, I get these on, on iHerb. And then last month I shared with you guys how I was really enjoying the black salt. Still loving that, but I also have been loving from the same company, the Spice Lab, the Italian black truffle salt on the popcorn. It is delicious. If you like truffle flavored things, just sprinkle this on. So yeah, I've really been liking this. I enjoy popcorn, but I detest like microwave popcorn that has that like, I don't know, I don't like the bags. They always have some sort of weird residue and you guys know I follow a vegan diet, so most of the like bag popcorn has butter in it, um, except the kettle corn flavor. And I don't like kettle corn. I just want like plain popcorn. Uh, so I find it's hard to find popcorn uh, that you know isn't isn't kettle or butter. Um, and I don't like I don't like the uh, to me like the microwave popcorn in the bag. It has a weird taste. Probably because when I was a child, um, I had this. <laughs> I, for the longest time throughout my life, I have detested popcorn. It's only in the past like decade where I have uncovered a love for popcorn because when I was like five, five or six, um, I went to, I was taking the movies and I had never had buttered popcorn before and I loved it, ate too much of it and got violently sick. And so for the longest time, anytime I would smell that movie theater popcorn, it would just take me right back to that. I've, I've maybe, maybe I've, I've ever thrown up, this is getting graphic, I probably never, probably maybe four times in my life can I think of that I have actually thrown up. And so when it's that few times, you really remember. And for me, it was the buttered popcorn <laughs> and I could not hack that smell for the longest time. Going in the movie theaters, I would have to like cover my nose when I went by the by the concession stand. But recently I have really gotten into popcorn, just plain popcorn. I really like it. I really like putting different seasonings on it. And I kind of want to try making popcorn balls. I see there's a recipe for them on this on this bag. So that would be fun. But yeah, rather enjoying that. It's just like a you know snack. If you feel, if you will, one thing about this truffle salt though, and you know, I've never really, I've only recently gotten into these seasoned salts, but I've noticed I've tried cooking with this, like putting it on vegetables while they're cooking and it loses the truffle flavor. Is that something that happens? I find I can only taste the truffle when I just have it, you know, on sprinkle it on already cooked things. If I, cook with it, it loses the truffle taste. I don't know if that is a known thing or maybe it's just so light that it kind of gets cooked out 
pretty easily. But otherwise, it does have a strong truffle flavor at base, baseline until you cook with it. It kind of loses some of that. Anyways, guys, those are the things I've been loving this past month. I did have some skincare failures this past month, but I'm not including them in this video because they're from a brand that I have been trying out for several months now, and I'm gonna do a full brand review for you guys later this month. Uh, so you'll hear about some failures at that point. But uh, yeah, stick around for more vids. Uh, so you'll hear about, of course, some things that were disappointing and didn't work. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and you're having a great start to May. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.